ex-architecture man, John White. He's going to introduce our speaker today. Good afternoon, folks. Right up here. Good afternoon, folks. We'll start again. A lot of very eminent people here today. I feel quite insignificant. Hello, Bruce. John, how are you? This is my turn to get us back to Bruce Smith. Is that where Bruce used to live in Hokitika? Well, I didn't. But he was born in Westport. <laughs> and he became an electrician. Now, right, Bruce will have to correct me if I'm wrong. He, he became qualified and shifted down to Hokitika. Well, that was a positive move. I'm sorry, Westport. <laughs> <laughs> they gave me half an hour for the introduction. I can see a very lot of sad faces there, so we don't want to listen to John Hoyt. Thank you. Those who knew Fatty Sweeney from Franz Joseph, hands up. Well, there's not so many will know what I'm referring to. Because Fatty, Fatty Sweeney wrote a book, and it was called Good Bastards. You might recall that. Well, if Bruce had been around in those days, he would have been included as one of the main characters. <laughs> I've had a few friends named Smith. One of them is a halfback called Aaron Smith. Know his name? Yes. The other one's Ben Smith. All black footballers. And the other one was Conrad Smith. I've lost Conrad, I don't know where he's gone. And my good army's fullback, Doug Smith in the Territorials. Is Doug here today? No, never mind. I don't really know the first two characters, but they provided me with such great entertainment on the football field. I consider them as my friends. It's great to have Bruce here today. He knows he's amongst friends. Is right, Bruce? I'm not going to mention local body politics, because if you open the press on Thursday, there was a double page on Bruce Smith. It was most entertaining, so I read it from A to Z. I had 10 years as a councillor in Hokitika, so I know what's involved and what he's putting up with. Bruce is a true blue West Coaster, no doubt about that. He qualified as an electrician, moved to Hokitika, and opened his businesses there. His business interests included building the three-story building called Como House in Tankwood Street. It's still there, and a very prominent building it is. Bruce has introduced the world to the Coasters Club. How many of you belong to it? How many of you watch it? Well, the rest of you are missing out because he makes regular presentations on Facebook. And those Facebook entries are most entertaining. And he covers the West Coast from Karamea to Haas. And I've seen lots and lots of old place people and much of interest about the West Coast. He even covered the closure of the Hokitika race course. Good group. But he actually covered a lot of the people who belong to the race course. And we saw some very, very famous faces there. And the Hoka ticket named people will remember Francis Lubbock. Bruce has had to put up with a lot of antagonism, particularly from activist rate payers, and also a couple of rebel councillors. We won't name them. And soon maybe a monitor. Do you know what a monitor is? It's somebody who comes in to your meetings and oversees you and watches what you're doing and then reports back to the big fella in Wellington. You can read all about their activities in the media. Bruce is standing for mayor again after three years. I wish him all the best and every success. Also, to coin a phrase of those of you who watch Facebook, catch you later. <laughs> Welcome, 
Well, that's going to be hard to beat. <laughs> Look, uh, thank you for the chance to come along here today to speak to you in Nelson. Uh, I've just had a text from my son, it's snowing in Hokitika. <laughs> I see on the Coasters Club that it's snowing in Renunga. It's snowing at Lake Canary. And uh, it's fantastic, isn't it? I mean, it's just awesome. <laughs> we've got 10.5 uh, metre swells out at sea. And we've got uh, eight and a half metre swells having a crack at Revel Street at the moment and uh, reducing some of the property values there. The odd dump coming under attack, which means that we won't have to clean them up. Now, it's an illustrious group of coasters that, that are here today and I've, I've seen so many faces that are familiar. And the best part is that none of you are getting any older. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. And John, are we correct? Look, for me, being born in uh, Greymouth, uh, raised in Westport, and then in 76 moving to Hokitika, I can say that I've got a pretty good feel for the politics of the coast. And because the coast is pretty unusual, the politics are unusual, and to an outsider they often seem strange. You know, when a coast is in London, he's a Kiwi. When a coast is in Christchurch, he's from the coast. If a coaster comes from the Buller, they're not even part of the coast. <laughs> they're from the Buller. They've got their own rugby team. Totally different. They're not coasters. They're from the Buller. You know, we're all proudly parochial. And I keep, every time I get interviewed, they say, this is parochialism. I say, it's great. I love it. I mean, it's fantastic. You know, I've played on the fringes of politics for years. And I've had a few bruises and on the way through. I did a stint as a trustee at, at uh, Westland Bank when I first met a young fella called Kenny Beams. It was back in the 80s. Kenny's here today. Ken, we were both uh, a lot younger then. I did three years on regional council. That was great fun. I did three years as a trustee on uh, Development West Coast. And that was three years of my life I'll never get back. <laughs> I did 10 years on the uh, airport company, the Hagatika Airport Company, and now I'm the current mayor of Western District. And there would be many who would say, how on earth did that happen? You know, some people shake their head and say, it's just, what, what caused that? So I thought I'd tell you about it. Durham Havel phoned me. And he said, uh, Bruce, uh, you're going to be the next mayor of Western. My reaction was, uh, Darren, look, I'd love to, but I've stood on so many toes over the years, I'll never get elected. And further, uh, my wife Jenny had said to me, look, um, if you get a moment of madness like that, and it comes to your head, you will be living at the Empire Hotel at Canary. <laughs> so, Darren was only Darren could do. He said, look, don't worry about Jenny, the girls will take care of her. And he said, and don't worry about the people, he said, because they're not stupid in Westland, and we've got some things we need to change, and someone's got to be able to stand up and change them, and that's you. I said, okay. He said, a few, a few feathers are going to fly, but he said, you've got to crack an egg to make an omelet. Now, I've never forgotten that. I thought that was pretty, you know, coming from Durham, that was pretty good. <laughs> anyway, I went home about a week later, and Jenny said to me, uh, look, uh, we think you should sit for mayor. <laughs> Keep in mind, I had six months of getting thrashed on not doing it. So I thought, okay, we'll better take advantage of this and we're into it. So, and I'll always remember that Saturday, the day that the election results came out. I was in the garden pruning our red robins. I was feeling so I was a bit nervous, and because uh, it seemed to me that it was going to be very close. I got a phone call from Tania Winter, who was the chief executive. And she advised me that uh, I'd been elected. It wasn't a, a long phone call. In fact, it was actually really short. So I went and said to Jenny, uh, well, I've got a job to do. Now, I never went into the council building for two weeks. And spent that time discussing with the councillors who got elected uh, a way forward, an agreed way forward. My first entry into the building was really frosty. And it was like that for about six months. There was uh, quite a bit of uh, to and froing with the chief executive at the time. 
which was right up my alley. I just loved it. The first major twist of the roller coaster came in uh, February of 2017, when the serious fraud office raided the Vic Gold's house on Canary Road, made headline news throughout New Zealand. Councillors and myself as mayor were completely unaware that the chief executive had laid a complaint with the SFO and it had been going on for several months. And to this day, I've never seen the substance of the complaint. As I said, it caught us all completely by surprise. The CEO, the CEO was ultimately suspended and she made the decision to, to uh, resign and pursue other interests. An internal investigation was launched into the affairs of the Vic Gold's involvement with all of the, co the council contracts, and including uh, the wastewater plant at Franz Joseph. Not one allegation, not one thing was found that was out of order. It was noted that neither council nor gold had ever awarded a contract to a cake decorator in Auckland. <coughs> never. It had never been to a council table. There was never a contract, full stop. And so the media continued to print articles about the cake, the, the cake uh, maker. Now I note now that close to three years later, and no charges have still been laid by the SFO, and Gold's life remains in limbo. He lives in Auckland these days. Very unsatisfactory in my point of view. And every time he applies for a job, he's got to disclose that the SFO are investigating him. He hasn't heard from them for 18 months. So after the departure of the former CEO, Robin Reeves took up a temporary position as we advertise for a new chief executive. When Reeves walked into the building, the temperature returned to normal and I started to enjoy my role as mayor. It was, it, you could feel the temperature change. In November of 2018, Simon Bastian took up the position. Now that was a move that had a risk for us because he had no local government experience. However, his strength was in operational aspects of council business, and these far outweigh uh, all of the, the other concerns that we had. But at the end of the day, a council's business is three waters, it's uh, consents, and it's roading. And if you don't have those skills, then you don't have those skills. So let's have a look at the, the roller coaster so far. October the 12th, 2016, elected. SFO raids staff members' house, 17th of February, 2017. I remember it well. Drove past, there's cars everywhere. What was going on there? CEO resigns, April of 2017. The Havel flood wall was approved unanimously by every councillor at a meeting on the 5th of July, 2017. Unanimously by every councillor to be done under emergency legislation. Cyclone Fahey, there was a bit of a hiding on February the 1st, 2018. A month later, Cyclone Gita come along and gave us a real hiding. A state of emergency was declared. Cyclone Hola turned up in March of 2018. I said to Vicky Keenan at the time, Mickey often would go to church on a Sunday and put in special requests for, for Westland. I said, you've got to start going because the old church is still not open and they were using the temporary one up at Seaview and he be, hadn't been going. So I blame Mickey Keenan. <laughs> um, on the 26th of March this year, there was a 100 year flood and once again a state of emergency was declared. On that day, I was standing on the bridge, on the Waiho Bridge, and I was filming for the Coasters Club. And I was saying things like, this is scary. There were, there were rocks coming down the size of cars, and they'd hit the bridge and it'd go, Ooh. and I thought, Ooh. there were cars coming across, and there was people like myself. Anyway, I walked off the bridge, walked into town, and about 15 minutes later, I got a text, and it said, 
the bloody bridge is gone. And I thought, the Fox River Bridge must have gone. I didn't, didn't realise, because the Fox River Bridge was also under major attack at that time. But no, it was the, uh, it was the Waiho. There's a reason that, uh, that cars have small rear vision mirrors and large front window screens for looking forward. When we look at the rear vision mirror, we see the changes that have occurred. The removal of the Friends fault avoidance zone, the construction of the Havel Wall on the north bank of the Waiho. The local government commission came in and suggested that we three <coughs> councils should all have a group hug and have one council. There was a lot going on and behind the scene that we haven't seen and a few friends in local government lost at the time. However, at the first meeting, they said, is there anything that you wish us to do? And this is in the minutes. And I said, pack your bags and bugger off home. Now, they ultimately did, but it cost the ratepayers $5.7 million. Now, we haven't got a lot of ratepayers on the coast. $5.7 million for a one district plan. You wonder how you could spend that amount of money, but apparently we're going to. There's been some amazing successes in the last three years, and especially under Simon Bastian as chief executive, in obtaining grants and subsidies from central government. We've had over $10 million in the last 26 months, three times more than the last two councils combined. So, and it's, it's come about because of relationships with probably uh, not Minister Sage, but some others. Council CCOs have reported increasing profits. Past has suddenly become visible. You know you can actually use your cell phone down there now. It's fantastic. And they've got new toilets. Bruce Bay has finally become a rating district of its own. The 30th Wild Foods Festival was an outstanding success. And at that festival, we signed a friendship agreement with Hong Kong City, which has brought about a number of benefits. And the first 20 students from Hong Kong arrive in Hokitika to Westland High next week. And it's worth 20,000 to the uh, school, and they're coming every 90 days for the next five years. So you do the numbers. And it, it was a result of a, uh, a trade delegation that was taken to Hong Kong, led by two members of the Williams family, myself, and some of the local business interest groups. It went unbelievably well. Council invited Iwi around the table. So we now have representatives from Makafio and Ngati Waiwai that sit around our table. They have full voting rights in uh, audit and finance, and they have speaking rights, but not voting rights around the council table. It's worked brilliantly. Saving and restoring Sunset Point has been a highlight for me, because in October of 2016, we were 17 metres away from it cutting through, and the dump that's underneath it would have created a lot of problems. We got some holes because we weren't 100% sure where the dump was. We found a uh, friend gun carrier, uh, lots of drums with the pink stuff in them, uh, and uh, thought, uh, this is a real problem. We need to make sure that the sea is frustrated in its efforts to take it away. And that's what's been done. We obtained a million dollar subsidy to upgrade the Whitcomb Valley Road. And we did that for Cliffy Harris. <laughs> We've had an expansion of three times at Hagatinga Gorge. We visited the numbers last year. We were close to 80,000. And it was funded from a government grant, Tourism Infrastructure Fund, again. In Fox Glacier, a major upgrade of the water has just been funded by the Tourism Infrastructure <coughs> Fund. The opening of the Fox Community Centre and the saving of the postal agency, something that I was particularly proud of. It seems <coughs> silly, you know, there's only 30 post boxes there, but we managed to, I think we bullied them into staying. In France, new sewage ponds about to be opened, funded completely by central government. 
new fresh water lines, doubling the capacity of fresh water into France, and new toilets which are already up and running. And once again, funded by central government. And of course, the Havel Wall. Ocarino has new toilets installed. Once again, funded outside of the ratepayer contributions. In Watara, the community hall has been upgraded. And if you go to look, it looks fantastic. And there's new toilets coming there. A new water treatment plant has just been commissioned. All of it funded externally, away from the ratepayer. Funded by relationships. New toilets in Ross just been approved and are being constructed at present. Funded by central government, funded by you lot. Fantastic. It's, it's something we love. In Hokitika, a grant to build new toilets and uh, car parking at Sunset Point. And the construction is well underway. The toilets have already uh, been built off site. And once again, funded by local donations and central government funding. The $1.3 million strengthening of the Carnegie building. Contracts out, contracts have been let, funded by Lotto and Development West Coast. <coughs> Rate power completely insulated. The $1.5 million Development West Coast covered facility at Westland High. So it's four courts, fully covered, and it's, uh, it's underway. Construction starts in August. It'll be finished in January, and it'll be the largest indoor outdoor facility on the coast. Lions and Hokitika have been the, by far the most successful community group that we've had in over 40 years. Now they're involved in every aspect of what we do. They've completed 60 projects in the last two years, and they're an amazing group. Kids study in Hokitika is the largest free children's event in the country. It's the, the largest free children's event in the country. Once again, run by Dr. Anna. The upgrade of Laser Park has now been fully funded. They're going to build a pirate ship and all sorts of other stuff for kids. And it's, uh, it's something that's got huge public support. But by far the biggest change that's occurred is the move away from council not being part of the community to council now being part of the community. And that's resulted in the strength and the growth of the community groups. And there are some community leaders that I want to talk about as well. People like Jackie Grant, very controversial, shifted the pioneer statue into the middle of town, funded it, raised all of the funding herself, had the thing shifted, it's now one of our most photographed items in the town. She also raised $45,000 for street lighting. And so we went out and raised another 35,000. And this year, there'll be a doubling. So when you go into Hokitika now, there's, in the winter, it's actually got a good feel about it. It's, it's fantastic. Hayden Simpson, driving the upgrade of the skateboard park. 350,000, early in the stage. Glenn Coombs, driving the construction of a new pavilion for Cass Square. The funding has started. Emma Thomas, a $300,000 upgrade that she's driving for the kids' playground at Cass Square. Our deliberate drive to attract domestic tourism has outstripped virtually every other district in New Zealand. Figures are there. And I put part of that down to the success of the Coasters Club in promoting good, positive stories and coasters coming home. We've, we, we've outstripped the, our nearest competitor by 11%. The opening of the West Coast Wilderness Trail, now rated the top trail in New Zealand, has been a winner for our coast economy. The Chief Executive, Simon Bastian, has proved to be a winner. We've had a number of senior staff that have left by natural attrition. And the team that's being built there is very, very qualified. Now, you probably read in the paper that uh, every now and then, someone decides to write a letter about Westland or do an article. And 
I love it. I just think that it's so much nonsense that I, sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and go, what are they doing? Well, here's some thoughts for you. You won't find Councillor Carruthers making comments outside of Council. He's too busy adding value to Westland. And he's the guy that drove the fundraising for the Carnegie, the Carnegie building. And he's done an amazing amount of work that you'll see come to fruition in the next couple of years in relation to heritage tourism. You won't find Ginger Olsen making comments outside of council because he's too busy with so many projects on and he likes to keep an eye on it. Durham Havel, you won't see him commenting because Durham's out there, he builds walls. And it's quite good to and he keeps an eye on all sorts of things. You won't find Deputy Mayor Latham Martin out there whinging and moaning. He's, uh, he's been busy, had a successful fundraising of over $3 million for Westland High and the indoor, uh, the indoor hub. And uh, he's been very successful in getting it together. Now there's a reason there's been so much growth in Westland. And part of it is actually this very engaged group of councillors. It's not all councillors. The other four councillors have been paid $270,000 over the last three years by ratepayers. And I'm hoping that they're going to spend some time making a note of what it is that they've done to add value to Westland. I don't think it'll take too long for them to write it down. Now you'll see myself as me having lots to say. And it's fair to say in some areas of Wellington, I'm not too popular. I support the, the removal of windblown logs on the coast. I cannot understand what makes people think you should allow a valuable asset like that blow down and leave it there. Or cut it into two foot lengths and leave it in the bush, which is what's being done at the present time. I'm really concerned about the changes or the proposed changes to the white bait regulations. It's controlled by stealth, don't like it. I've told Minister Sage there's going to be a pushback in relation to stewardship land. Now, you probably wonder what stewardship land is. It's the biggest land grab in New Zealand history. It makes up 33.99% of every hectare of land on the coast. And it's going to be, and it's land we have access to at the present time, and it's going to be stolen by Minister Sage and her cohorts. Trying to keep this PC correct if I can. Forty-eight point six percent of all stewardship land in New Zealand is on the west coast. That's a huge amount. And as I said, for the last hundred and fifty years. Coasters have had the ability to access this land, even when it's controlled by DOC because of the legislation. And DOC's been reasonably easy to work with. There is some land that's stewardship land that should be in national parks. And it's, there's quite a lot, particularly in South Western. Now, Conservation Minister Sage says stewardship land is conservation land, and therefore it all has to be treated the same as national parks. That would deprive the coast of an important part of our future prosperity. It's not up to us to give away the income and the ability to earn a living to our grandchildren. It's not our generation's role. Would any prudent government allow this to happen? Well, we'll have to see. We told Minister Sage there would be a pushback on no new mining on conservation land, stewardship land and said, this is unwise, and we're gonna get people together at the Terra Cow Bridge and show you how unwise it was. Five and a half thousand people turned up, and I've gotta say, they were very orderly, well controlled, and they sent a very firm message to government. Now, I don't know if they were listening, but it's a taste of what's to come. The coast is at the moment, are very, very united in this attack from central government. I'm advocating, advocating for a uh, solution to Franz Josef, it's not just myself, cutting a hole in the Waiho Loop, running the river straight, 
and letting it do its own thing in a straight line. It's been proven by the Havel Wall. In the big flood of the 26th of March, every flood wall in French Joseph got damaged. The bridge got taken away. The only wall that sat there and was not damaged was the Havel Wall. I named it the Havel Wall. Durham said, why don't we call it the Smith and Havel Wall? No, no, no you've, uh, you've got it. Minister Sage has uh, informed me that she wants the proposed Haas Hollyford Highway off the table. Now I've informed her that in fact it's never been on our table. But we protect the road reserve that, that council owns. And that enables it to be used in future years, perhaps under a different government. So you might ask why there's been so much bad press. It's really simple. Got a couple of councillors around the table. They can't. They don't get their own way. They keep losing the vote, and they take it fairly hard. There's been a campaign since February of 2017, and fortunately, the information that backs the campaign up is suddenly being released. So you'll see a fair bit of that in the future. You'll see exactly where the troubles come from. Hundreds of letters written to every government department you could think of, making all sorts of allegations that simply can't be proven and won't be proven. And it all come from a small group called the Westland Residents and Ratepayers Group. And John didn't want to name them. They've been dishing out negative nonsense since mid-2013. Now it's politics, I actually know that. And, but, and there are some that say that you shouldn't respond. I don't agree with that. You know, they attacked Maureen Pugh in 2014 to discredit her in the 2014 elections. And it worked. It definitely worked. But I reckon it's worked in her favour because the allegations that were made have now been proven to be incorrect. That's a fact. They attacked Mike Havel. Mike Havel informed me that it was because of the grief he received from Anthea Keenan and this group, he wasn't going to sit again. So we have this small group, one's a mayoral candidate, one's the person who nominated them. We've got a councillor that lives in there. When she left, I said, <clears throat> the right thing to do here is resign and allow representation in South Westland. South Westland, South Westland has had no representation now for nearly two years. And of course we have Geoffrey King. Geoffrey, are you here? I've never met you. I'm really keen to see him. Never met the man. Writes these disgusting letters every week. He's at letter number 263. I saved them all. Now despite these destructive ex efforts, sales in Westland, the sales of houses, are the highest in New Zealand. The, the change between the house that was sold last year and the house that was sold this year, we're up 35.4%. The New Zealand average is 1.5%. In the last 12 months, unemployment is under 2%. When a house goes on the market, it's there for a couple of days. You can't get rentals. You can't buy a house. Tourism numbers in total exceeded 1.7 million last year. It's a lot. 750,000 of them were domestic, so within the country. There is a garnet mining project underway going through the resource consent process, <coughs> which will start off very shortly. 56 jobs and a, a resource similar in size has been discovered at Hunts Beach. The company involved is an American company. It's investing $50 million and it's a world supplier of Ghana. The proposed waste to energy project have nominated Pocatica as their preferred site. Don't know the full details, time will tell but it's a $260 million project. 
the new owners of uh, Western Milk will no doubt be interested in the opportunity to have a carbon neutral production facility, the only one in New Zealand. There are 33 new pensioner houses going through the process at the present time. It won't, it's not enough for all of you, but it's going through the process. And most of the people on the waiting list are people who want to come home. We don't have enough houses for staff. That's a good, that's a good uh, problem to have. Now a couple of councillors and myself have been accused of being bullies around the council table. I say hard enough or we'll leave. It's a, politics is a contest of ideas and group hugs are not part of the agenda. So in my role as mayor, and you can't sack me for another eight weeks, in my role as mayor, I stand up and I speak. If someone attacks the coast or attacks Westland, then I stand up because I am the mayor. But most of all, I'm a very proud coaster. I'm delighted to be here today. So thank you very much. And I'm more than happy to take the odd question if you want me to. I can take a couple of questions and run the rate behind schedule. So anybody got a particular question? Bruce, yes. Does your going have some business for the four hour day? Thank you. <laughs> I really love where I live. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, thank you. Jimmy, would you like to come to the thanks, please? This will be another man you'll know fairly well. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, it's obvious that uh, Bruce is very good under the high ball. And, and if you're going to lead a team, you have to lead it from the front. He's leading it from the front. And that's what we have to see. Thanks, Bruce. It was a great speech. Thank you very much. I like join your team tomorrow. <laughs> Right, just before afternoon tea, we've got to draw the raffle. So. Uh